Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, lovers of beauty and truth and friendship and peace. I wish to offer you a salutation from Tehran to you dwellers of Melbourne, a city where I have been and I know what a lovely city it is. It enjoys all the blessings of modern life and all the blessing of cultural and intellectual and spiritual life. And I wish I could avail myself to accept your invitation and to participate in the gracious programs arranged by Victoria Library, but uh, unfortunately I could not arrange for that. But now I am going to invite you to a mysterious, joyous, wondrous land which is called the Realm of Gold. The Realm of Gold is the realm of literature, the realm of art, the realm of science, the realm of philosophy, and you have heard of the famous saying by Rudyard Kipling. He once wrote in a poem that East is East and West is West, and the twain shall never meet. But he continues to say that they do meet in a great person. They do meet in a great poet. They do meet in a great artist. Where there is no east, no west. And in the realm of gold, which is beyond space and time, east and west can properly meet. So Sadie and Shakespeare meet each other in the realm of gold. They are close neighbors. And we can have the honor to receive, to be received in audience of such great kings and princes, such great minstrel and bard, the minstrel of Persia and the bard of Stratford, or the son of Stratford, William Shakespeare. I do not explain much why I have chosen Sadi to be compared with Shakespeare, but I will just attract your attention to a few of common grounds, common topics, which the two poets are closely related. First of all is that Sadi is the most quoted Persian poet. Whatever you read, whatever lecture is given, is not without a quotation of Sadi, just as it is not without a quotation from Shakespeare in England. So they are, both of them are the most quoted poets of their country. It is said that if the complete works of Sadi is printed with the title Quotations from Sadi, you are doing justice to Sadi. It is not wrong. And in England, I have seen a book which is called Quotations from Shakespeare, and the book is as thick as the complete works of Shakespeare. So, these quotations have turned into popular sayings in the society in the intellectual centers, in academic centers, 
And uh, it is so mixed with the language of Persia and the language of English people that uh, maybe some don't know that so many good expressions belong to Sadi or belong to Shakespeare. There is an anecdote about two American ladies. They wanted to know more about Shakespeare and they were curious to appreciate him. So they came to England and attended several plays and later they were interviewed and they were asked, um, how do you find Shakespeare after all? One of the ladies said, well, after all, he doesn't seem to be a ge great genius. He has just joined together some popular quotations and turned them into plays. So, it is funny that they didn't know that these popular quotations are just because of the works of Shakespeare. Shakespeare had not used them. Shakespeare has created them. A second point is that Shakespeare has used many different literary devices, literary forms and patterns, like a play, like ballad, like sonnet, like rhyming couplet, and many other different forms, prose, poetry, songs. And the same is true with Sadi. Sadi had not specialized on a sonnet like Hafez or like on Katrin's like Omar Khayyam, but he has uh, a wide range of different literary forms. He is a master of Ghazal, which is sonnet or something like sonnet. He is a master of rhyming couplets like Ferdowsi with the same rhyme and rhythm. He is a master of prose writing, prose interspersed with poetry in his rose garden. So both of them are not limited and they have been praised for that both at home and abroad. Sadi has been praised by every poet coming after him, particularly Malak Sharai Bahar, one of the 20th century great poets of Persia. Maybe he was the last of the classics. He says, Rasti daftar Sadi be gulistan maunat, tayyibatash be gul o sabze o reyhan maunat, us peygamber o in name be furghan maunat, he says that he really has created a sacred book like the Quran. It's comparable with the Quran, just as Shakespeare is comparable with the uh, Bible. So he has been praised at home. Milton has composed a beautiful sonnet about Shakespeare. Matthew Arnold, another sonnet. And there are hundreds and hundreds of writers who have praised Shakespeare among the English writers. But outside England also, Shakespeare has been praised by Goethe, by Victor Hugo, by um, Emerson. Goethe has said that Shakespeare has not left anything for us to say. Whatever we want to say, Shakespeare has said before. And in better expression. This is what actually Amir Khosro, the parrot of India, has said about Sadi that I had the cup, but I didn't have the wine. So I import the wine from the tavern of Sheikh of Shiraz. I have heard that in Melbourne, in Australia, there are, there, they produce a kind of wine which is called wine of Shiraz. I want to say that the wine of Shiraz originally is what in the tavern of Sadi and Hafez and Rumi and Omar Khayyam, it is much stronger and much uh, more attractive and inebriating and drunkening than 
the double distilled brandy in in your country. So Goethe said that Shakespeare has left nothing for us to say. Amir Khosrow says that Saadi and Nizami have left nothing for us to say. And Hugo says about Shakespeare that Shakespeare is an exhaustible, an exhaustible, inexhaustible. It never finishes. You never run out with it. He gives and gives, and he has more and more to give. He is like an ocean. And uh, about Sadi, Emerson has said that Sadi, alongside with uh, such great poets as Dante and Shakespeare and Cervantes, uh, he is one of the poets who are perpetually modern. They are ever modern. They never get old. They are ever popular. And also, Henry David Thoreau has said that I am another Saadi, or I am Saadi himself. I am coming after 600 years again to speak in the form of Henry David Thoreau. I am Saadi. Or you can say that Saadi was me 600 years before. And uh, so they have been both, the poets have been praised at home and abroad. But going to the ideas, I have to make a reference to the perennial philosophy in Sadi and in Shakespeare. Perennial philosophy is the common ground of all religions of the world. If you reduce all religions and you cut the forms and the patterns and the traditions, cut them out and get the gist of it, then you will see that there are just a few. The belief in God, who is the creator of the world. There is a Lord who is present at all times, and he is wonderful in creating such a wonderful world. And second, it is immortality of the soul. In perennial philosophy, which in Persian we say, Jawidan Khirat. This is perennial philosophy, it means the philosophy which ever is uh, ruling over the ideas of people. So the second part is uh, immortality of the soul. Shakespeare has spoken of immortality of the soul, that this is not the end. This is either an awakening, as Sadi says, we awaken and we find ourselves in another world. Shakespeare says that our life is of the stuff of dreams, of the same substance of dreams. And our life is asleep. When we awake, then we are experiencing other worlds of living. So both Sadi and Shakespeare believe in immortality of the soul. In fact, for Sadi, the body sometimes is likened to uh, a cage for birds. He says, oh Sadi, one day, don't be afraid of this. One day, the door of the cage will be opened and you will come out. Shakespeare, in the very famous piece, To Be or Not To Be, that's the question. There he says, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? What is this mortal coil? It is our body. This is a coil like a snail, and we shuffle off it. It means just like the snail which comes out of its body and just continues to live. When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, or in another place, Shakespeare says, there are such harmonies in the world which are heard by those who have ears. And they are 
And these harmonies, we don't hear why. Because of this vesture of decay. Vesture again means garment. This garment which corrupts and um, is destroyed. So this uh, vesture of decay is again our body. So neither Shakespeare nor Ferdos uh, sadly are afraid of the uh, happening which is called death. But Shakespeare says that we have seven stages in this world to experience. It is very famous. And the same, uh, of course, uh, with some differences, is of, Sha- of Sadi. I can recite a part of Shakespeare and a part of Sadi. All the world's a stage. Shakespeare is really, it is wonderful here, because he is like a painter who has painted the seven stages of life with a few lines. In two or three lines, he just gives you a picture of a different stage of life. He says that all the world's a stage, and all men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his life plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. This is the nursling. And then, the whining schoolboy. Whining means constantly grumbling, I don't go, I don't do this, I don't do that. The whining schoolboy with his satchel on his back and shining morning face. His face is like a sun shining in the sky. His shining morning face creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover. And just look how he gives the painting of a lover in, in a few words, actually. This is minimalism in art. Minimalism is to express something with the minimum use of the forms. So he says, and then the lover, sighing like a furnace, Furnace, you know, kure, ahangaran, as we say in Persian, sighing like a furnace and singing a woeful ballad to his mistress's eyebrow. This is the lover. Sighing all the time and singing all the time and singing a ballad, a sonnet, a ghazal in praise of his beloved. A woeful because it is full of groaning and moaning and complaining uh, that why you don't come to me, complaining about separation. So a woeful ballad to his mistress's eyebrow. And then the soldier with a strange oath, swearing, and bearded like a part. Part is the leopard, means the tiger. And bearded like a part. Jealous in honor. Sudden and quick in quarrel, peeping, seeking bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And this is the soldier. And then the judge with fair round belly, referring with good capon lined. Capon is the chicken, actually, chicken, a male chicken. With good capon lined is referring to the corruption of the judges at the time. This is what Sadi also says that every judge, people, ordinary people, their teeth become blunt by eating sour things. But the teeth of the judge becomes blunt by taking sweets. So this is again a reference, a very refined reference to corruption both in Iran and in England of the judges. So. And then the judge, the justice, in fair round belly, with good cape and lines, severe eyes, and beards of formal cut, full of sows, wise sows, so is saying and, and quotation, full of wise sows. Every time he just says something interesting, 
some saying of the past or present, full of wise souls and modern instances. And so he plays his part. And the last scene of all is uh, that ends this strange, eventful story is uh, second childishness and mere oblivion. Son's teeth, son's eyes, son's ears, and son's taste, and son's everything. This is the end of the life of man. And Sadi has the same reference that he starts earlier, not from the baby, but from the embryo. He says, Eke bakti nutfe budi dar shikam. Bakti digar tefl budi shirkhar. Hamchanan bala girefti ta buluq. I recite the Persian so that if people could uh, search for it, they could easily find it. Hamchanan bala girefti ta buluq. سر بالایی شدی سیمین ازار همچنین تا مرد ناماور شدی the soldier همچنین تا مرد ناماور شدی فارس میدان روز کارزار آنچه دیدی بر قرار خود نماند آنچه بینی هم نماند بر قرار they are the same ideas in a different uh, form of very monumental and uh, well composed poetry of course uh, the difference here is that I recite Shakespeare in the original language, but I recite Sadi with translation of my poor language. But uh, so you see that almost uh, step by step, wherever, whatever Sadi says, Shakespeare follows. Of course, Shakespeare was not aware of, the, of at that time. Sadi had not been had not been translated. But sometimes I once said that Otello did not take the advice of Sadi. What is the advice of Sadi? In Otello you read that uh, when Otello comes to the takes the final decision of killing Testimona, of a strangling Testimona, and he enters the room, he says, Well, it is Better that I first put off the lamp, put off the light, and then put off the light. The light means the life of uh, Desdemona. And he himself explains to himself that why? Because if I put the candle off, put the candle out, I kill the candle, as we say in Persian. If I do that, I can rekindle it. Easily, but if I put off the candle of the life of Desdemona, where is the uh, Promethean fire, the Promethean heat that I would relume, relume means kindle again the life of Desdemona? And what Sadi says to a king that, oh, be aware of your actions. When you are angry, when you wax wrath and anger against a person for a sin he has done, then don't make haste. Think about it. Because if you... It's very easy to break to pieces the la'l, means the ruby of badakhshan. Uh, Ruby of Badakhshan was very famous. Actually, Nasser Khosrow, the great Persian poet, has been called the Ruby of Badakhshan. Because Badakhshan is the place where Nasser Khosrow was born in the east of Iran. So, We can say that if he had heard the advice of Sadi and did not make haste, he would be saved from this great uh, criminal act. Well, <clears throat> there are many other subjects I can parallel and step by step show that, for example, about music. What is music for Shakespeare and what is music for Sadi? First of all, the whole world is filled with music. 
And these harmonies have filled the whole nature. And every, as Shakespeare says, every orb, every little orb, every little sphere, every little celestial body in the sky is an angel singing on its way and playing lyre while people don't uh, hear it just because of the vesture of decay, because uh, of the veil of our body. And uh, Sadi says, Jahan pur sama as to masti yu shur, but he can chibina daro in a kur. The whole world is filled with dancing and music and zest and zeal. But we are blind, we are dumb, we are deaf, and we are blind. What can we hear? What can we see? In another place, Sadi says, he is, Shakespeare says that uh, a man who has no music in himself, nor is he not moved by the sweet concord of sounds, he is fit. He is the best person to be chosen for a stratagem, for a spoil, for any criminal act. He employ him. If you want to employ someone for such acts, for a spoil, for a stratagem, for treason, then such a person who does not like music, let no such man be ever trusted. And sadly, satirically, uh, is ridiculing the people who don't listen to music and they prohibit and call it forbidden. He says that when we see that Ushtur Besheir Arab Dar Halat has to Tarab to Khuchao Dami Kaz Eish Bi Khavari. Even the camel responds to the music, to the sound of voice of human being, of lawyer, of the uh, bells on hanging on its neck. Even this camel does it. So if a person, if a man does not respond, he is no more than a donkey. اگر آدمی را نباشد خرست. شطور را چشور و ترب در سر است. اگر آدمی را نباشد خرست. Another thing is uh, love. Let's uh, bring it to an end by the question of love which is uh, the main theme of Sadi and the main theme of, of Shakespeare. It is true that Shakespeare has written tragedies and comedies and historical plays, but in all of them there is, very few of them may, you may not find the episode of love. Even in Hamlet, for example, the main theme is not, is, is uh, hesitation, but there is the love of, uh, a very strong love. You will find in almost all comedies of Shakespeare, they are the stories of love. The tragedies, except Macbeth, which is free from love, which is actually, I can, I can say, empty from all love and all good things and all light. There is no light. Macbeth is a very dark night where there is no light at all. If there is a light, it is the light of the dagger of a criminal. So, Sadi has filled his works with love, different sorts of love, love from earth to heaven, from heaven to earth. Sadi, like the poet that Shakespeare describes, his eyes in a fine frenzy, there is a fine frenzy which is better than being reasonable. It's above reason. It is not below reason. A fine frenzy rolling and thus takes a glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. So this is Sadi. He is looking one eye to the heaven and the other to the earth. And he believes that if you make love on the earth purely, and candidly and earnestly, then you are making love with God. The true God, 
I mean, the true beloved is always God. But God has represented it here. And the beauties you see here, if you don't make love with the beauties here, uh, what are you going to do in paradise? Because paradise is a place of lovemaking. So if you don't like lovemaking and you don't do it here, then uh, what are you going, how are you going to go to paradise? You don't need it. So Sadi, the work of Sadi is filled with love, particularly his sonnets. Almost you cannot find, scarcely you can find one sonnet, one ghazal, where you do not find uh, wine, saqi, cupbearer, one dancing or making revelry and happiness. It is filled with happiness. It is filled with dance. It is filled with uh, the frenzy of love. Almost all his divan and particularly his lyric poetry. And Shakespeare has created such great lovers like Portia, like Bassanio, like in Romeo and Juliet, it is the greatest work of Shakespeare on love, which is purely on love. But in other tragedies, you still see that in Othello, there is love. In Hamlet, there is love. In King Lear, there is love. Everywhere you find that love is one of the episodes, one of the important things. So, Shakespeare says in a poem which has been uh, put to music by Schubert, Franz Schubert, the great composer, he has put some uh, tunes, lovely tunes, on some of the poems of Shakespeare, like, Who is Sylvia? What is she? And the like, Come hither, come hither, come hither, under the greenwood tree who loves to lie with me, and tune his merry note with the sweet bird's throat, come hither, come hither, come hither. These are the songs of Shakespeare, very lovely musical pieces, and that is why great composers have put music on these songs. One of them is this very famous, very lovely. It is a dance itself. It is the music itself. It doesn't need any Schubert to put a, put, put a, a music on it. It is full of music. But it is better, of course, to add the, the season, uh, the chashni of that music as well. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Um, the form of the poem is, uh, you can say it is triangular, means it is a trio, it is a trio. Sadi has some sort of poetry called Musallasat, actually means the trio. Means the first line is Arabic, the second line in Persian, and the third line is the local language, vernal language, vernacular language. So he's here, it is three by three. There are stanzas of three lines. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear, your true love is coming, who can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lovers meeting. When lovers meet, there is no more journey. Sadi says, Hame om raft bo yad qadame ravandegan ra chobe ma'amani residi degarat safar nabashat. When you come to your beloved, you come to the final peace, final rest, then there is no more journey. So, uh, journeys end in lover's meeting. Every wise man's son does know. What is love? It is not hereafter. Don't put off uh, love for tomorrow. Do it today. What is love? It is not hereafter. Present mirth has present laughter. You cannot laugh and rejoice in the future uh, happiness, in the future pleasures you are waiting for. Present mirth has present laughter. The future is still unsure. So 
then come and kiss me, pretty sweeting. Then come and kiss me, sorry, they come, then come and kiss me, sweet and twenty. Then come and kiss me, sweet and twenty. Life is a stuff will not endure, or use is a stuff will not endure, because your use life will not last so long. And sadie, I can hardly translate the sadie's poetry on love because they are so complicated and with so many allusions to different stories uh, of Leili and Majnun. But uh, I, I will just a few lines of one of his famous sonnets called Be Jahan Khur Ramazanam Ke Jahan Khur Ramazust Aashiqam Bar Hame Aalam Ke Hame Aalam Azust Qam o Shadi Bar Aarif Che Tafawut Darat Saqi ya Baade Bede Shadi An Ke In Qam Azust That the sweet pangs of love as Shakespeare says Shakespeare says that there are sweet pangs, there are sweet pains, alam laziz in Persian, alam laziz, ranje lezat bakhsh, the sweet pangs of love, this is uh, at the heart of Divan Sa'di. He says that, che tafawut darat, if it is, whether it is dark or it is pleasure, whether it is sorrow or it is happiness, because let us drink of our wine in, in the health or for the health of the sorrows. Because the sorrows that are coming from the beloved are better than pleasures coming from outside. Sweet, Shakespeare says, sweet are the uses of adversity. Adversity is good. It is sweet. Why? Because uh, it, uh, it is true that it is ugly and venomous like a toad, like a frog. It is ugly and venomous, poisonous, but yet wears jewels on his head. You see, the frog has two jewels of sight. He sees, and that jewels is the jewel of wisdom, hidden, put in the midst of the face of the adversity. Sweet are the uh, uses of adversity. So, let me end or conclude this, uh, this course with a poem by Professor Nicholson, uh, the great Eastern Studies scholar. He is actually, in some respects, the greatest scholar on Persian and Arabic literature. He has translated the whole Masnavi of Rumi into English, and he has translated much of Arab literature and uh, the most difficult books in Arabic literature, like the poem of the way by Ibn al-Faris, he has translated. So he has praised Saadi to such a height of commendation that, um, oh, full of human wisdom. He says, oh, Saadi, full of human wisdom. He is the mirror of human nature. He is the mirror, universal mirror of all divine nature of man. Whatever you have forgotten, you can find in Sadi. So read Sadi and look at yourself and see what is wrong with you. Oh, human with full of human wisdom, happy sage. You know, there are some philosophers who are not happy. There are most of the time they're grumbling. They're complaining about the world. How is it like that? But he is happy. Happiness is a good sign of art, is a good sign of religion, is a good sign of mysticism, is a good sign of success, is a good, good sign of everything. If you are not happy, you have lost all. So he is a happy sage. He is a happy philosopher. Because he knows, he has justified the ways of God in his works and his heart. He knows that everything is okay. 
And that is why he is rejoicing all the time. Because he, there is, the whole world is filled with suffering and deprivation and everything. But at the same time, he is sure that God is on his throne of justice and harmony and good. So a happy sage, Persian Horace, he has compared uh, Sadi to Horace or Horace, uh, the great Roman uh, lyric poet who, like Omar Khayyam, advised people, recommended people to take the wine and to avail themselves of the time and carpe diem, this is the main uh, theme, carpe diem means seize the day, seize today, don't wait for tomorrow, don't think of yesterday and don't wait for tomorrow, seize the day, this is the philosophy of Sadi and the philosophy of Hafiz and the philosophy of Omar Khayyam, seize the day and this is the philosophy of um, uh, Horace, he was uh, the, the first uh, century before Christ. So he has like ho Persian Horus mingling on thy page. What has Sadi done? He has mingled on the pages of his book, of his uh, rose garden and garden of perfume. He has mingled where childhood learns to read. Age reads to learn. Means children start learning, learning Persian. They start learning Persian by reading Sadi. And at age, when you are a sage, when you are a philosopher, you know everything, then you read Sadi in order to understand. Then read to learn, learn to read. Gay with truth, in turn, in a well-dressed style, the style of Sadi is famous. He is, it is winning and it refines the gist and it wins the heart. And uh, because of everything he says, even if it is not very important, you like it because he pleases. The matter is pleased because of the style, the golden style of Sadi. I hope that this very brief comparison between Sadi and Shakespeare have given you just a, a taste of the wine of Shiraz and the wine of Shakespeare. And I hope that all humanity would turn back if they want to regain their spirituality, their uh, intellectuality, their love, their peace, their family, everything they have lost in the modern uh, lifestyle. You can find it back in Shakespeare, in Sadi, and uh, global, such global figures like Sadi and Shakespeare. I hope that um, this wine, more than the wine of Shiraz in Australia, this wine will be distributed everywhere. Thank you.